ladies and gentlemen, we present the Navy Lark with our three stars, Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee. There have been many books printed on the art of public speaking, including my own, announcing for announcers, Bodwell and Bond's 15 shillings. <laughs> but no matter how well that speech sounds and looks in front of the bathroom mirror, goodness knows how it will go on the night. Mr. Phillips is the exception. His speeches sound terrible in the bathroom, too. Um, uh, gentlemen. Uh, gentlemen. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, gentlemen. <laughs> What's the matter, Leslie? I can't find it. What, the gent? No, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, no. no the, the, the right opening for this speech. Speech? What speech? Oh, the few pearls of wisdom I'm going to chuck over next week. Well, where's this? Oh, it's not that I want to hear them. It's just that I want to know how to dodge them. Oh, you couldn't be there anyway. I've been asked to give a lecture to the local naval cadet force. You? Oh, good gracious, what about? Oh, if you must know, navigation. <laughs> You're joking, of course. If you're going to teach navigation to young cadets, in about five years' time, there'll be ships running aground on every beach in Britain. Why, well, it's ridiculous. Why? Well, why don't you do the old country a favor and scrub round it? Well, it's all sort of got out of hand. Their commanding officer, Captain Tingley Painter, has done his overexcited nut. Well, what do you mean? Well, I agreed to have a chat with one or two of the cadets sometime, and he sort of, he sort of built on that a bit. How much? Well, he's hired the town hall for my lecture and advertised it all over the county. Well, I see. Well, you're certainly going to go down in a blaze of disaster, aren't you? Morning, Hedda. I was just thinking... Good gracious. Good morning, Mr. Phillips. Good morning, sir. It's insomnia, of course. <laughs> what is, sir? Well, the fact that you've managed to prize yourself out of your little cot before lunch. Oh, I see. Yes, I was thinking of going to the M.O. and see if I could get some tablets for... Oh. oh, it's Leslie's day for being got at again. He's quick, you know. <laughs> Incidentally, Heather, I've heard some rumor about an admiral or somebody giving a lecture on navigation at the town hall next week. I wondered if you'd like to go. An admiral? Well, the rumor's a bit exaggerated, sir. It's not an admiral that's giving the lecture at all. It's me. <laughs> you? I'm afraid so, sir. I see him. In about five years, there'll be ships beached all over Britain. <laughs> Wonder who that is. Come in. I say, excuse me, chap. Why, what have you done? Hmm? <laughs> no, no. Oh, my name's Tingley Painter, and I'm the CEO of the cadets, and I wanted a word with Sub Lieutenant Phillips. Yeah. Taller. <laughs> yes, by all means. Um, over to you, lecturer Les. <laughs> oh, thanks, Steve. Uh, 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 how do you do, Captain? Oh, I'm terribly well. Yeah. Don't know. <laughs> but I must admit, I am worried. <laughs> you wait until next week. You'll be a nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, by that time, I shall have given my... Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, very funny. Uh, what is it that's worrying you, Captain? Well, it's rather difficult to say. <laughs> oh, go on, force yourself. <laughs> well, to put it bluntly, the effects of the adverts for your forthcoming lecture, Mr. Philip, have been somewhat uh, unexpected. What do you mean the town hall sold out already? Hardly. We sold one ticket so far, and 14 cadets have resigned. <laughs> Really? Well, that's jolly decent of us. Oh. Oh, lummy. Uh, who bought the one ticket, may one ask? Uh, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to be sure they'd let me in. So it's not so bad, is it? I mean, the other cadets are bound to come. Well, I can tell you that for certain tomorrow. Right, why tomorrow? Well, I'm seeing a deputation from their parents tonight. You know, say yes, sir. I beg your pardon, sir. I didn't know you was in very... Morning, Chief. What's all the panic? Oh, it's nothing, sir. Just, 
Just a bit of a giggle, as you might say. Oh, we can do with one of them. What's happened? Well, you're not going to believe this, sir, but I've just had a bloke from the cadets asking me to put up a poster advertising a lecture on navigation given by Mr. Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Well, sir, I mean, the very idea of you, I mean, you, you giving it a... I mean, it's not a misprint. <laughs> no, Chief, I'm afraid it's not. Oh, well, that's it then. What do you mean? Well, about five years' time, there'll be ships on beaches all over Britain. <laughs> um, no, Chief, and not. The nation may still be saved. I understand the attendance of this lecture is liable to consist of Mr. Phillips, a creaking chair, and a barking dog. Uh-huh. The parents have heard something of Mr. Phillips' qualifications and of this dwarf's activities in general. Actually. Well, now I say, Captain, that um, we have a complete and thorough explanation, which I will not trouble you with at the moment. I haven't had time to work it out yet. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Of course, of course, it would help to immensely if the dwarf happened to have some particularly spectacular achievement to its credit. <laughs> you mean something like all this long route march nonsense that's been going on? Yes, exactly. Uh, what's that? I, I don't think I've heard about that. No, sir, no, I don't suppose you have. No. It's usually reported in the morning papers and you're never up and about. <laughs> Early enough for them, are you? <laughs> well, it's a little difficult to explain, act. <laughs> For some reason best known to themselves, a lot of people all over the country, including service personnel, have been trying to set up marching records. Marching records? Yes. And if you say one word about hearing the one from the bridge on the river Kwai and family favourites, I'll slash you! <laughs> of course, if you had a man here who could set up a record, it would be just the thing. Yes. Now then, let's see. Who is there? Yeah, well, if that's all, sir, I think I'll just... <laughs> Not so fast, Chief. No, well, honestly, sir, I've got this stack of Well, stuff. it'll have to keep, won't it? Will it? Yes, until you get back. Oh, blimey. <laughs> boots, 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 boots. <laughs> Marching up and down again. <laughs> and Pertwee is going to be inside them. Jolly sporting of you to volunteer, Chief. Ah, <laughs> wasn't it? Is, uh, is the ammo about at all, sir? Leave so, Chief. Why? Well, it's me limp. That's what it is, me limp. I mean, naturally, I... I like to limp right before I start. Of course, being... hereditary limp. <laughs> may take a year or two, but the sooner he starts manipulating me ligamentorials, the sooner... Yes, well, I'll have, to, uh, I'll have a word with him about your distressing and somewhat sudden ailment immediately, Chief. In the meantime, go and sort yourself out a comfortable pair of boots, 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 boots. Foot powder? Yes, you better have a couple of tins of that. <laughs> Corn plasters? Uh, spare socks? Another pair of boots in case you walk through the others? <laughs> Johnson. Ship's biscuits in case you lose your way? <laughs> Johnson. Another pair of boots in case you walk through the spare pair. Johnson! Look, stop enjoying Chief Petty Officer Pertwee's bitter pill of adversity identification. <laughs> you marched right into it, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> left, right, left, right, left, right, splosh. <laughs> That's right, go on. And it's one little thing, though, that you've overlooked. That's so. What? Well, after Chief Petty Officer Pertwee has been on this horrible and gruesome march, horrible and gruesome Chief Petty Officer Pertwee will be back. <laughs> oh. Well, I was just trying to make sure you got everything you need with you. Yeah, so I noticed. It jumps to look, whilst I'm away, you know, I, I'm supposed to be leaving you in charge of the stores. I'm not supposed to be taking the flaming stores with me. <laughs> well, there's only these two Aversacks and there's three suitcases and the little... Yeah, all right. Well, tip them all out again. Pertwee's travelling light. Which is, uh, Which is more than can ever be said of you, Tatty. <laughs> How far is it you got to march, Chief? Look, Johnson, if you ask me that just once more, so help me. So help me, Johnson, I'm going to fill you in. 
<laughs> Marble arch, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely spot to collapse in. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Tubby, but I'm not collapsing anywhere. No. Chief Petty Officer Pertwee will arrive at Marble Arch as fresh as a particularly fragrant day thing. <laughs> well, it's 250 miles. A mere nothing. But if you have to go to the main office, you take a jeep. <laughs> You've never walked a step since your mum Pertwee took the reins off you. <laughs> no, well, I'm not starting now, my son. I've been having a few words on the blower with my relatives, you see. So there are taxis and coaches and buses and in one place a horse. Waiting for Johnsy all over South England. I knew it was too good to last. You're going to cheat. All the way, Johnson. All the way. <laughs> ah, there you are, Chief. Yeah, that's right, sir. He's just taking a slight kip before the grim will delay. How very wise. He's not going to be all beer and skittles, you know. <laughs> you want to bet? Look, I've told you before. I've told you before. Next time you want to say something, shut up. <laughs> if you don't get your up shut in time, destroy yourself. <laughs> I've got all the details here for you, Chief. Well, there's no need to bother, sir. Thank you. I shall just... I shall just keep going in the knowledge that what I'm doing, I'm doing for the service. Every hit and muscle... <laughs> every tortured nerve in my poor, broken body will be suffering for the glory of the flag. For the glory of the... What of the cost? What of the cost of the devotion to the duty of one humble member of the senior service can bring fresh honour to the old country? And deserve the undying gratitude of the nation. Oh, do us a favour, will you? Favour done, sir, I've seen. Now, here's the map, and here are the details of the route I've worked out, which includes all the checkpoints. Checkpoints? What checkpoints? Oh, naturally, we, we've got men posted at various points along the route to make sure you don't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we don't want anyone saying you, you catch lifts from any of your relatives who had a taxi or a bus or a... Um, or even a horse. <laughs> How do we? <laughs> don't we? <laughs> no, we don't. Uh, th this has all got to be above board and beyond suspicion. I mean, I should hate you to walk all that way for nothing. If you hadn't put them men at the checkpoints, he wouldn't have done. His relatives would have done it. <laughs> of course, you ought to have had more training, really, but you might get the prize even yet. Oh, I started to think that. Prize? What prize? Oh, a hundred pounds, of course. Oh, that one. I wasn't even going to bother with How much? <laughs> well, a hundred pounds. You know, the money Admiralty have offered for the chap who breaks the record. Uh, if he's in the Navy. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah, that hundred pounds here, Warner, is of so many, it isn't one. Yeah. The prospect of doing me plates in for gain never entered my bonds. Yeah. <laughs> Only because you didn't know about it. If you had, you'd have had me marching to John O'Groats a week ago. <laughs> Not too late yet, Patty Felix. You know, that is a point, you know. I mean, most of these marches have tackled it in pairs. It helps you to keep the pace up. Oh, yeah, well, it would, wouldn't it? If there are two of you, it means that if one gets tired, the other one can start stepping it out again, so that the other... <laughs> Good morning. Here. Come back here, chubby chataway. <laughs> And something to say to you, guess who's going for a stroll along the prom, prom, prom? With John, John, John. Oh, you don't have to guess, guess, guess. I know it. I am. So well done, Johnson. Carry on. Jolly good of you to volunteer. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> now, then, it's see. Foot powder. Yeah. Yeah, you better have a couple of tins of that. Corn plasters. Fourteen tins, yeah. Spare socks. You're running... Rotten, absolutely stinky rotten. Yeah. Rotten. <laughs> yeah, rotten. Yeah, very likely. I don't know what you're so worried about. I mean, it's going to be a lot easier for you. Why? Well, I mean, if your feet get tired, you can just keel over and roll the rest of the way. <laughs> doomed. Doomed. That's what I am. Doomed. You are, Johnson. You are. <laughs> Good morning, Heather. Any news of our wandering boys yet? Not a word, sir. Oh, how odd. At the latest, they should have been at Marble Arch by last night. Aren't you forgetting who we sent, sir? Yeah, you're probably right. 
I had hopes that the possibility of a hundred pounds at the other end would keep Pertwee going till he dropped. Well, but surely the prize money goes to the draft, not to the individual. Yes, I believe it does, but I didn't think I'd trouble the chief with petty detail. <laughs> Besides, if he'd known that, we'd never have got him on his feet at all. Hello, main office. This is Commander Pertwee, Portsmouth. Oh, good morning, sir. It may be good your end. This end is murder. Number one there? Uh, one moment, sir. Commander Povey. Yes, sir. How did you guess? And the way you held the phone away from your ear. Uh, hello, Commander Povey. Number one here. Ah, now, I suppose it's too much to ask, but have you the faintest idea where Chief Petty Officer Pertwee and that other idiot have got to on this ridiculous march? Um, not exactly, sir. We're awaiting news of them right now. Oh, uh, then here's some. I have a lorry driver in my office. He turned up here this morning with an empty van and a complaint. Complaint? Nothing contagious, I trust. <laughs> Number one, this is a very serious matter. Oh. I gather he gave a lift to two sailors yesterday. One was a tall, thin, petty officer, and the other was a very fat rating. Oh, I see. Um, what is your visitor with the empty van complaining about exactly? The fact that his van wasn't empty before he picked them up, of course. <laughs> yes, I was afraid that would be it. Uh, where did he drop them yesterday, sir? In Kingston, outside a second-hand shop, I understand. Oh, well, your van driver knows where to buy his stuff back, doesn't he? Uh, incidentally, sir, how did he happen to come to you with this complaint? Simple. They told him they were stationed here and that they were brothers. Brothers? Yes. Charlie and Albert Povey. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, I thumping well don't. Now, for goodness sake, find those two layer buds before they reach down and pitch anything else in my name. Yeah, we'll do our best, sir, but goodness knows where they are now. Oh, that's me, Lock. Not another step. Me poor little tootsies have had it. Oh, no, they haven't, Tootsie. No, they haven't. They're just getting warmed up. Warmed up? If they get any hotter, it'll be a job for the fire brigade. <laughs> All right, then. Well, look, dip your boots in that puddle for a bit. Right out. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> well, all right, all right. Come on, that's enough. You've had your little paddle. Come on, Patty, off we go again. I'm not going. Not another step unless I can take this puddle with me. <laughs> Come on, look, don't be a baby. Can't be much further now. I mean, we were, we were in Kingston yesterday afternoon and we've been going all night, so it's now about, uh, about four o'clock. We... Here. Here, Johnson. What, Chief? How far is Kingston from Marble Lodge? Oh, I don't know, about 10 or 11 miles, I suppose. Why don't you look at that map Mr. Phillips drew up for us? Because if anyone knows about map drawing, it... <laughs> I should have known. I should have known him and his left foot down a bit. <laughs> He's rotten, that's what he is, rotten. Miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. They're all his fault. All right, all right, all right. That's enough. Now simmer down. Come on. Come out of your puddle. Shut. <laughs> no way to speak. Ah, 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 ah. Shall not. Temper, Shall temper, not. temper. He's rotten. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Now, belt up. Come here. Come on, blow your nose for Chiefy. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Now, then, the question is, where the blazes are we? I don't know where you are, but I'm in me puddle. <laughs> For the last time, come out of that puddle. Why? Because it's my turn. <laughs> lovely. Ooh, it's lovely, isn't it? Lovely, lovely, lovely. You cheap. I just thought of something. What now? While we're trying to figure out where we are, why don't we pop into my mum Min's for a cup of tea? <laughs> your mum Min's? Yeah. You're stupid, Nick. Your mum Min lives in Plymouth. It'd take hours to get back there. No, it wouldn't it? We could be there in about five minutes. But what are you talking about? Well, just notice this is our road. My, uh, <laughs> my mum Min lives at number 27. What? Yeah. Min Repo, it's called. <laughs> Well, 
Doreen, your mum mean is about to receive two bona fide travellers. Yeah, yeah. She got a spare room. No, only mine. The blue room. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's all right then, isn't it? Pertwee yeah. Park's there for a day or two while he has a think. Right, oh, I don't mind sharing my little room. Sharing? Who's said anything about sharing? You make your own kipping arrangements. I've made mine. <laughs> Come on, quick monks. Come on, Johnson. Lift. if I know what all the fuss is about. Well, I can tell you that. You and the rest of your drafts. Who said that? Oh, this is Mr. Quump. He's acting a spokesman for the cadets' palace. Uh, oh, then why didn't they pick somebody else? Uh, if I may say so, Mr. Cumby, it does seem that they're making a terrible lot of noise over a lecture. The lecture was only the start of it. We've been going into things a bit since that were announced. We got our MP to find out a few details of what your draft has cost the taxpayer in the last few years. Oh, dear. Oh, wasn't that nice of him to go to all that trouble? I mean, we must have cost them a good, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, lummy. Now, I might add that in his investigations, our MP had the full cooperation of a commander on the C&C staff, so we know the figures are authentic. You, uh, don't have to know the commander's name, by any chance? Why, Povey, I think it was. Why? Oh, we just wanted to drop him a line of thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that personally. He's here. What, Thunderguts is? Yes, Mr. Phillips, Thunderguts is. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, I'm very pleased to see you, Thunder... Uh, Bell, sir. <laughs> I've got a personal score to settle with you, Lutz. Really? I have that. That I have. I have that. Have you that? Hmm? <laughs> Perhaps I should explain number one. Mr. Crump drives a van between here and Kingston. Oh. An empty van? After he's given lifts to sailors? Yes. <laughs> what a funny job. <laughs> I mean, who wants a pair of chap to drive empty vans about the countryside to give lifts to... Uh, oh. <laughs> Pertwee and Johnson. Yes, all we need is for them to turn up tonight. You know, I've got a nasty feeling you shouldn't have said that, sir. Huh? <laughs> so have I. Well, I'll open it. Come on in, quick. Chief Video Officer Pertwee and Abel Seaman Fatso. Oh, I mean, Abel Seaman Johnson report. Here, let me get us All in, in good Do time, all in good time. And where, may I ask, have you two been? Been, sir, mm -hmm. to London is ordered, sir. And may we take this opportunity of claiming the prize of 100 nicker. Uh, Queen. Oh, I mean, a cheque will do, but we'd rather have the cash. Well, don't be ridiculous, Chief. You haven't been anywhere near any of the checkpoints. Well, I said we'd rather have cash, sir. Oh, the checkpoints. Oh. No, well, we couldn't, we couldn't find any checkpoints. Couldn't no. find them. You no. had match, surely. Still, you should have claimed the prize when you went to London, if it was a record. Not here. Oh, sir. Oh, sir, don't say there's been a mistake. Mistake? What are you talking about? You didn't mean we were only supposed to march to London? I mean, we thought we had to march there and back, sir. Oh, the tragedy of it. <laughs> Don't bear thinking about all those hundreds of miles. We staggered over, we never thought but the good of the day. All church. right, all right. I don't believe you were anywhere near London. Oh, we have proof, sir, haven't we? Yeah, definite proof. Yeah, I've, I've brought you a souvenir as a present, sir. One handsome canteen of Croninium and painted cutlery, sir. Yeah, a plate is better. Yeah, it's all stamped, sir. You look, a present from London. Hey. Eh? Here, Chief. Can I have a look at that crow minimum plated quiet? That's it, quiet. Go and rest your weary flab. <laughs> like me, you've suffered great and horrible hardships. And I happen to know someone else who is suffering great and horrible hardships, too. Oh, you do, say? Yeah. Earlier today, I had a phone call from a Mrs. Minnie Johnson of Plymouth. Oh, that's my mummy. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it isn't. No, no. The lady's a complete stranger, sir. No, no, she isn't, Chief. She gave me a message for you. For me? Yes. She said you've been staying with her for the past few days, and that when you left this morning, you seemed to have 
accidentally taken her canteen of cutlery with you. Well, I can explain, so you see, that was... She in... also said, would you send it back quickly, as she only has a plastic teaspoon left. <laughs> and she's having kippers tomorrow. <laughs> She'll be lucky we get them on the way up. <laughs> You're rotten, that's what you are. You whip my mum means eating irons. <laughs> well, I left the plastic spoon, didn't I? Yeah, but she's got nothing to eat it with. <laughs> yeah, I say, I say. I look, look, look at the time. I, I, I will start my lecture. Yes, well, well if that's all, said I'll be getting... Here you are, Chief. I've got a reserved seat for you at this lecture. Yeah, thanks all the same. But but this gentleman will show you the way. You're sitting together. Oh, how to do, sir? I don't think we... Let me get at him, that's all I ask. Let me get at him. Oh, blimey, it's Mr. Crump. Ah, it is that. That it is. It is that. Is it that? Yes. Well, well, well. <laughs> Yeah, you're just the chap I wanted to see, Mr. Crump. Oh, you yeah, know, about all that, your van, Mr. Crump. I'm, I meant to tell you. I meant to tell you this. Look, have you noticed about the rear doors? Do you know, they, they, they swing open as you go round corners. You want to fix hey. that? You want to fix them rear doors before you lose something? I mean, well, there's a second-hand dealer in Kingston who's not above running behind vans. And... You know, he'd wriggle out of a Swiss roll and bring the jam out with him. Now, well, let's have a bit of hush. I, I want... That was Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, the recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnson. Gentlemen, we present the Navy Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips. A day with a crowd at the London sail can be grim, but when our crowd sails to London for the day, it's wiser to stay at home if you don't want to get hit in the bargain basement. Well, even if you live as far away as tropical Potsdamie land, you're not safe. Here we face another problem of fine and magnificent magnitude, which is worthy of much serious thinking, I am thinking. I also am thinking, I am thinking. <laughs> ah, but are you thinking of the same problem of fine and magnificent magnitude, which is worthy of much serious thinking, when you are thinking? As the one that I am thinking, I am thinking. <laughs> I am thinking that I solve both problems by not giving them another thunk. <laughs> Worry for you, my fine gentleman friend. Multiplied to my stupendous spoon company. <laughs> Has your problem of fine and magnificent magnitude anything to do with the truly handsome signal of great urgency for His Excellency Governor Todd Hunter Brown that you are holding between thumb and third finger of your chubby left hand? It has indeed. This truly handsome signal of great urgency arrived two days ago. From the top of Boatman Lordship in Whitehall of England. Oh! Is the truly handsome signal of great urgency asking His Excellency the Governor Todd Hunter Brown and his native wife uh, to come to have tea with top boatman lordship in White Hall of England? It is. <laughs> <laughs> then His Excellency Todd Hunter Brown had already answered that he will be happy to have tea in White Hall of England and is at this very moment packing his fine old genuine imitation plastic leather trunk bags for a trip. <laughs> <laughs> then the top boatman lordship will have much respect for his excellency the governor Torrent Brown when he sees him wearing his fine old genuine imitation plastic leather trunk bags I'm thinking. <laughs> but how did he answer the signal of great urgency when I still have the signal in my chubby left hand? <laughs> The top boatman lordship sent another handsome signal of even greater urgency, which I took to His Excellency Governor Todd Hunter Brown yesterday. Oh, my God. <laughs> In that case, I shall not now need to take this handsome signal to him after all. And we can both get back to that problem of fine and magnificent magnitude worthy of much serious thinking, which you have forgotten. 
I take on that proposal, uh-huh. but would suggest that we continue our much serious sunk elsewhere. As I see His Excellency Governor Todd Hunter Brown uh-huh. and his lady wife uh-huh. approaching and have no desire to be caught for carrying his fine old genuine imitation plastic leather trunk back. In short, scarpa. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, hi, come back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, give us a hand. Absolutely. They've turned off like they always do. I've been trying to get them to take away my answers for yours. They have, my dear. If they hadn't, by now, government house would be behind so many bottles, it would look like the Crystal Palace. Hmm. <laughs> True. Do you think perhaps I should stay behind and find out who's been getting all those troubles, Professor? <laughs> no, my dear. We've both been invited to London for an official visit, so we must both go. Well, it's all very inconvenient. Because I shall never finish my crazy pavement path in the garden now. Crazy pavement? I thought it was to be an ordinary path. Well, it was. But it sort of turned out like that. <laughs> yes, I know. And it leads straight round to the off license. <laughs> well, your turn to well, never mind about that now, Amelia. We must get on or we'll miss this month's supply boat. And I don't want to be stuck in Patani land when we could be in London. So I wonder what sort of official reception they'll have laid on for us, I wonder. I wonder. Oh, well, it'll be all cut and dried and worked out to the last detail by now. I'm looking forward to it, you know. <laughs> Number one, some idiot at Admiralty has bungled the whole thing. The governor of Patanid and his wife are on their way over here, and nothing has been done about the official reception. Yes, quite so, Commander Purvey, but how do we come into it? If there had been anything else painted gray and the closest available, you wouldn't have done. As it is, we've got to use Trustbridge. Well, it's very nice of you to think about, sir. Uh, however, there will be terribly fun. If you could possibly manage to sail up the Thames as far as Greenwich, pick up the Admiral, then on to the port of London, where you'll pick up the governor of Bataniland and his wife, and bring the whole party back to Greenwich. Mm-hmm. Uh, wouldn't it be simpler if the governor and his wife had four pennies on the river bus? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. And they'd have stood a much better chance of getting there. But if this is supposed to be an official visit. Oh, I know what you mean, though, yes. If they went by bus, it would take months getting the governor's fourpence back from the Admiralty. <laughs> you know, he could be right at that, sir. They still owe me one or three halfpence for a yard of... Number one, stop encouraging the fool. <laughs> now, once and for all, have you got everything quite clear? Oh, actually, sir, yes. We nip up to Greenwich, pick up the Admiral, take him to Patani Land, and then back to... No! <laughs> oh, he'll do it. I know he will. We'll never see the Admiral or the Governor again. Well, I don't mind lending the Governor fourpence for the river bus and adding it on to one and three hatred that will be already owed me for a yard of... Number one, I am a very, very, very patient man. Good, I imagine you need to be in your job. <laughs> oh, rather. Always a load of muck flying about from one direction. Will you just be in a Shall we? Why not? You were about to say, sir? I was about to say that I am a very patient man. But if you make one blunder on this trip, I'll have you all dumped out of the service. Oh, Lord, if they do that, number one will never get his one of three hatens back. <laughs> well, I probably shan't anyway. Oh, uh, will you be coming aboard Trout Bridge as well as the Admiral fan? No, I shall be on one of the escort vessels right the start, so I shall be able to keep an eye on you. I also expect to see Trout Bridge looking as if she belongs to the fleet. What do you mean, sir? I don't want the Admiral or the Governor to think that they've been picked up in something we've borrowed from Tugbo Danny. <laughs> yes, I'll get the chief onto it at once, sir. There might even be time for a complete repaint if we get the whole ship's company onto it. This is the sort of thing that destroys a man's faith in human nature. <laughs> what is it? Well, this, all, all this repainting nonsense, of course. Look, I've got 14 houses in the village down out in flat grey undercoat. You know what happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Number one, bones in here, and whip for me eye glass for trout bridge. <laughs> 
Oh, no, no, but maybe the knife take liberties at times. Well, it was their paint. Here, Chief, hmm? how did you persuade 14 householders they wanted their houses painted battleship grey? They look a bit drab, weren't they? Yeah, very. But didn't have no choice. Oh, you mean they haven't got any other colour? No. Now, I told them it was the local council bylaw that all houses had to be grey. <laughs> I never thought they'd believe that one. They had to. Because it's cheap. Since when? Since my Uncle Egbert Kurt, he was elected mayor, of course. <laughs> Egbert Pert. We well, I don't think I know that one. Who's he? The local decorator. <laughs> yeah, we come to a sort of uh, little arrangement. Uh, carve up, you mean? Ah, uh, well, call it what you like. <laughs> call it what you like. Egbert and John's here doing all right. At least we weren't until all that hard grass got wasted on Southbridge. Do you realise we may have to buy a tin now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Say nothing of the two gallons of turps to thin it down a bit. <laughs> They're going to look nice, they are. Fourteen houses with one tin of paint and two gallons of turps. <laughs> <laughs> you should see the undercut. <laughs> I shouldn't think you can see it. Why? Well, that was half a tin of paint and three gallons of turf. <laughs> I'm surprised it dried at all. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> right, now, tempers are getting a little short down in the village, you know. Not having any hard gloves isn't going to improve, Matty. I don't know, taking things all round, this little trip to London could be considered extremely fortitude. 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 Dead useful. That's <laughs> uh, typical, isn't it? I suppose you'll leave Egbert to face the muck here while you pick up a few more perks through your Uncle Ebenezer and his tub. So me, Nunky. You know, I haven't found him yet to let him know we're going to see. <laughs> Corey, never forgive me if Mr. Phillips ran us aground somewhere and Nunky wasn't about to haul us off with his tongue. And a price, of course. Yeah, and a fixed scale of charges. Yeah. Yeah, and I bet I knew fixed them and all. The blower, Johnston. The blower. And me the blower. Oh, hello, Heather. Uh, will you get me port with five no, three... don't bother. I can get it. You want nothing. Oh, yeah, well... Yeah, I just thought I ought to pass the time of day with him, you know. Well, don't forget to pass on the glad tidings as well. You're through. Hello? Ebenezer Pertwee speaking. What's your name, Keith? This is Johnson. But Mr. Pertwee's out. Yeah, all right, all right. We're going to see. Oh, lovely. We've got to go. We've got to go up the Thames to the Pool of London and pick up an excellent, an excellent sea excellency ship. <laughs> hey, that's better than better. It's a dead shirt now. What do you mean? Well, considering the right old mess Mr. Phillips can get into in the open sea, I can't wait to see what damage he can do trying to navigate the river. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we can safely assume that uh, you'll click all right. Yeah, I'll go and get steam up in me cab straight away. Stop swanking, Nunky. Stop swanking. You haven't been able to get steam out of that boiler of yours for years. Your best offer is lukewarm, rusty water. <laughs> Never you mind what it is. It works. Here. I shall want my usual cut, of course. Yeah, I don't doubt it. But why you should get off for making a faulty phone call when you don't even pay for beats me? Yeah, who nicks all your coal for you? You do. And the last lot was all done. <laughs> well, if I gave you the best stuff, it would blow you clean out of the water. <laughs> Hello, Nunky. Remember me to Auntie? Oh, that's right. Try and ruin me, day. That silly old faggot brought an ear trumpet yesterday, so now I'm in dead trouble. Oh, why? You heard what I called her. <laughs> <laughs> See you on the sandbank. Hello. Phillips, you have to keep blowing that siren. Audible warning of a post, sir. The river's pretty crowded, you know. A lot of craft about it. I don't worry, sir. As soon as they can read our name, they'll all stop out of it straight away. <laughs> and they will if they're smart. 
I mean, you know what sort of muck I can get into in the open sea, but uh, when I go up a river, it can be nobody's business. <laughs> uh, uh, you are unkind, Chief. Now, what fascinates me is that we've got this far without closing the Thames to all shipping for a month. <laughs> There's plenty of time. We've got another couple of miles to get. Oh, <laughs> I fall for it every time, don't I? <laughs> oh. Bridge, number one here. And starboard lookout here, sir. Greenwich Pier approaching, sir. You mean we're approaching Greenwich Pier, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, sir. Although if Greenwich Pier could move, my bet is it would be nipping off up river as fast as he could. <laughs> yes, you're probably right. <laughs> oh, and sir, Admiral Sarge approaching, sir. Thank you, Goldstein. Admiral Sarge approaching, Mr. Phillips. Oh, good show. He's packed me alongside, sir. Thanks, Chief. Mr. Phillips. Yes, sir? What are you trying to do? Race him to the pool? <laughs> no, sir. I mean, we should win easily. We can do... Uh... <laughs> I see what you mean, sir. You think we ought to stop? Quite. Yeah. Stop engines, Chief. Stop engines, it is, sir. Oh, my let me get aboard, can't you? Admiral seems to be in fine voice this morning. Yes. Now, um, uh, what next? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, drop anchor, Chief. Uh, but, sir, the barge oh, is Chief, drop anchor. Drop anchor! Drop anchor! Drop anchor! It'll be about the third new barge the Admiral has had to slight errors involving us lately. Yeah, I have noticed that. Hmm, I suppose you haven't got a relative that constructs Admiral's barges, have you, Chief? Well, not as yet, sir, no. No, but the possibilities will no doubt be examined at our next family conference. <laughs> Who did it? That's what I want to know. Who put that blasted anchor through me barge? Oh, dear. Uh, good morning, Admiral. Welcome aboard, eh? More than you can afford, of course it is, man. That's the third barge you've done in. Fast as I launch them, you sink them. <laughs> Whose side are you on? Oh, purely a tactical error, I assure you, sir. Perhaps you'd like to go below and dry out in our wardroom. What's that? Have a fry up in your wardroom? <laughs> Talk sense, man. I'm soaking wet, not hungry. But I didn't oh, say Oh, this is rich, isn't it? An official reception for the governor of Batani land. He comes hundreds and hundreds of miles and no trouble at all. And I try to travel about five miles up river and look as if I swum it. <laughs> what was that? I'm nothing to... No, I'm nothing to do. Just the tug towing the Admiral barge away. Tug towing the barge away? Got there a bit sharpish, didn't you? <laughs> Now, I wonder who tipped him off. A pure blonde coming side, sir. Oh, I'm sure it is. Out of the kindness of his heart, the nunky happened to be passing whilst delivering urgent medical supplies to a sick cousin twice removed who fell off his uh, ice cream tricycle, sir. He probably said, uh, Yes, very commendable, Chief. <laughs> but let it be clearly understood that no matter what sort of muck we get into from here on, I won't have Nunky get us out of it if he's the last tug between here and China. <laughs> Don't bother, Mr. Phillips. There's only the chief's uncle hanging about waiting for a few crumbs off the rich man's table. Bridge, number one here. Starboard lookout here, sir. Tower bridge approach. Oh, I mean, we're approaching tower bridge, sir. Uh, funnily enough, we had noticed Goldstein, but thanks all the same. Uh, permission to hoist the signal for the bridge to be opened, sir. Oh, that's all right. I've checked up. We can just clear it. 
You sure, Mr. Strand? I think it's a positive uh... <laughs> Yes, there's a good four inches to spare. Between our overall height and the bridge. Yeah, just the same, I'd feel happier if the bridge was... Oh, but it takes ages, sir. I mean, they've got to get all the buses and cars off it. Then they have to haul it up and... Well, I mean, what's the point if we can clear it easily? Mm -hmm. Very well, be it on your own head. Liable to be on all our heads, sir, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, left hand down a bit. Left hand down a bit, it is, sir. Yeah, steady at that. Steady at that, sir. Now, easy. Easy. Now, straighten her up. Straighten her up, it is, sir. But with due respect, sir, you'll never make it. <laughs> ah, there you are. You see, no trouble at all. We've got bags of room. <laughs> we'll do it easily. <laughs> We've done it all right, sir. Sure. Our mast that tall for most of it's on the bridge. Oh, um, uh, stop engines. Uh, stop engines a bit like it is, sir. Oh, I know what's happened. It's, it's high tide. Oh. <laughs> We've only got that four-inch clearance for low tide. Oh, oh pity. Boy, you down there! Look what you done! Uh, who was that? Well, I, I think it's that bus conductor leaning over the bridge and shaking his fist. Oh, so it is. Uh, uh, good morning, bus conductor. Uh, lovely day. Oh, Jim, Nick, look what you've done to my bus. What? Stuck your flaming mask. That's all you, sticky box. <la> oh, dear, dear, dear. Have you sent for a doctor? <laughs> Uh, tell him there's another one right behind, sir. That's <laughs> <laughs> not likely. You tell him. What's my friend going to say? He's a nut. Well, just tell him what happened. Ah-ha. Oh, oh, that'll be good, that will. I'll be just be his face when I tell him he's back and he's been hit by a frigate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing. I can just see the Admiral's face when I tell him his frigate's been hit by a bus. <laughs> It'll drive the insurance company's raving mad, if not will. <laughs> what on earth? Oh, yes. Guess who? Oh, well, well. <laughs> oh, well, fancy that. <laughs> now, there's a bit of luck. Nunky in his tug again. He's doing well today, sir, isn't he? No, chief, he isn't. We'll oh. get Trout Bridge out of here without his help if we have to take the Tower Bridge and that flaming bus with us. I'll... Give over, Nunky. He won't wear it. <laughs> and you. <laughs> That'll do. One more word and I'll shove a tray over the top of your funnel and smoke you out. <laughs> Slow us down together, Chief, and, uh, all very tightly. <laughs> Slow us down, it is, sir, and every man for himself. Well, now, Baba, the only thing that surprises me about your little trip up here to the pool is that you got here at all. As a matter of fact, Commander Purvey has surprised us a bit. Yes. Jolly good show, I thought. Jolly good show? <laughs> you knock seven kinds of buck out of a tar bridge, a national monument, I might add, wreck a number 78 bus, and you reckon it was a jolly good show? Now, fair, fair, huh? I mean, look at all the bridges we, 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 we missed. Oh. <laughs> good grief, he'll want a medal next. No, 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 no. A, a, a vote of thanks from the Lord Mayor would do quite nicely. <laughs> I've, I've never met Mr. Whittington or his cat before. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I spoke. So are we. It's too late to change plans now, so I shall have to let you sail down river again. But try to remember that you have the Admiral and the Governor and his wife aboard this time. And we'd like at least one of them to arrive safely. Safely! Are you staying aboard, Commander Purvey? Much to my own personal relief, number one. No, I am not. I shall be right astern in Makepeace. Well, mind you don't bump us. 
What? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, well, uh, well, try not to kick up a rumpus. Oh, for crying out loud. Sail in five minutes, number one. The official party are in your wardrobe. Aye, aye, sir. And this time, try to remember to fly a signal for the opening of the bridge. They'll be only too happy to oblige. If you're only asked. There's no need to charge it like a rogue elephant. No, <laughs> and I'll see you at spirit. You know, spirit. Oh. <laughs> Sir? Well, Mr. Phillips? I, I was just wondering, what is the signal a ship has to fly if she wants Tower Bridge open? I've no idea. I suppose, Mr. Phillips, you're supposed to know that. Yes. Yes, I thought I was. <laughs> oh, well, I'll think of something. Left hand down a teensy weensy bit. <laughs> Left hand down a teensy weensy bit. It is. <laughs> well, Miss Phillips, have you thought of that signal yet? And uh, not quite, sir. Not quite. No, the nearest I got so far is this one. Yellow, blue, yellow. What's that mean? Uh, keep clear of me. I'm maneuvering with great difficulty. <laughs> no, I mean, we ought to fly that perisher all the time. <laughs> Bridge number one here. Starboard look out here, sir. There's a large yacht for us, sir. We're a bit close. Oh, yes, so we are. Thank you. <laughs> We're approaching Tower Bridge, sir. We're all acutely aware of that, Goldstein. Uh, permission to go below, sir. That masonry's powerful heavy when he's... No, Goldstein. <laughs> You get ready to duck like the rest of us. What's that bell? Uh, I think it's coming from the Tower Bridge, sir. Yeah, that's what they look. It's opening. Oh, so it is. Well, that's jolly civil of them. I wonder how they knew. That yacht ahead of us, Mr. Phillips. Whoever's on that evidently knows the right signal. Bridge number one here. Starboard, look out here, sir. Clear of the bridge, sir, and I didn't feel a thing. Prize to all of us, Goldstein. Thank you. Ah, wonderful sight, isn't it, sir? Real bit of old London. What is Mr. Phillips, Goldstein? No, sir, no. No, the way the bridge comes down after a ship has passed through. Jolly exciting. Uh, sir. Yes, it is. Been there all those years, too. What, Goldstein? Hmm? Uh, I mean, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, about the others. Uh, down she goes, almost shut now. Real bit of old London. Ah! Mm -hmm. What is it, Chief? Oh, nothing, sir, but it's a real bit of old Portsmouth and make peace beyond it, sir. <laughs> it's still the other side of the bridge. <laughs> what? Oh, no, so there he is. And it's almost shut. The sub engines, Chief. <laughs> sub engines, it is, sir. I don't want to miss this. If Commander Perry puts his foot down, he might make it even yet. Well, he certainly can't stop. Yes, I, I think he's going to, sir. Oh, I think it's going to make it. Yeah, yeah, you, you do it. You, you, you. Oh. <laughs> Everybody down. Great team and the rest of the pillars right behind him. Great cool thing. One night torpedo boat. Two Lord Chief and the gentleman of the press. <laughs> Tommy, how's that for monumental pile-up? <laughs> Better than your best, Mr. Phillips. Oh, blimey. Nike should clean up with that little lot. Mm, should indeed. Where is he? Oh, here he comes now, sir. Here he comes. Steady up, you old fool. Take it easy or you'll run out of steam. Monkey seems to be adrift, Mr. Phillips. Yes, so he does. What a shame. <laughs> I suppose we could take him in, though. Hmm? Yes. At a price, of course. The carver that we teach is a dirty bright carver. Yes, it is. Throw him a line, Chief. Oh, glory. Throw him a line, it is, sir. <laughs>
That was Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant. Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, the Admiral was Tenniel Evans, Heather was Heather Chasen, and Bracewell was Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Murray. <laughs> Every day there are board meetings taking place at which monumental decisions have to be taken. Naturally, Admiralty have their little get-togethers too, and at these meetings it's usually the Admiral who's bored. Shelling some of you. How much longer is all this argy bargy going on? But, Admiral, there are more serious matters. Oh, to... put a sock in it, Povey. You can't half natter at these meetings. Who asked you here, anyway? Well, you did, sir. Eh? Winnie the Pooh did. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I didn't say that. Oh, no, do we're... stop going on and on and on. Point is, do we act now or wait a bit? Oh, let's get it over with. Yeah, yeah, now. Well, all in favor? Well, good show. Well, press the uh, watch it, somebody. Well, what kept you? We've come to a decision, Provider. <laughs> yes, sir? We'll have the gin now. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, that's that settled. Let's chat about the test for this bloke Watson's invention, shall we? I say, thanks, awfully. <laughs> oh, what's this invention of yours, too? It's an extension of the use of radar, enabling it to be used over much greater distances. <laughs> it's an adaptation of the talk down system used by aircraft in fog, coupled with the Lawrence system used in the United States, where shore stations emit a radio pulse, which is recorded by an instrument in the ship. Yes, well... Then. These, of course, are read off in the form of position lines from the special law and chart, which gives the longitude and latitude without any radio transmission whatsoever. <laughs> now, in my system, <laughs> I've adapted the pulsator flanges and coupled the transistor... Yeah, lines hang, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, I've just thought of something. And you mean a snag? Rather, whatever happened to that gin? You know, <laughs> Now, sir... If we could get back to Professor Watson's direction finder, would you be agreeable to testing it shortly? Um, I feel it only fair to say that as with all new inventions, there is an element of danger. One can never be 100% certain until one has made a test. What we need for this test is somewhere that's completely isolated and cut off. A draft that is of no tactical importance so that if anything does go wrong, it won't affect our naval defences one way or the other. I agree. But where are we going to find a draft like that? <laughs> oh, 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 I don't think that's going to be too difficult. <laughs> In fact, I'm sure I know the very draft that fits all these requirements quite, quite perfectly. You do? Well, they sound a pretty useless look. <laughs> they are. In fact, those jolly jacks are the most idle jacks in the entire service. Well, I don't care what you say. I mean, Admiralty must think jolly highly of us to select this draft for these tests. Hmm? Now, that's a point, sir. But aren't you forgetting something? What, Chief? It was Commander Purvey who selected it. Oh. Oh, yes, 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 so it was. Hmm. Do we gather, Chief, that you feel there may be a slight element of danger involved? Well, sir, without wishing to commit myself in any way? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, you're being ridiculous. In that case, sir, sir Main's doors. Main's Yes, sir, they sent us the consignment of bulletproof vests. 
and a free hand to invent the turkeys, bonbons and fairy lights. <laughs> Gracious, what for? Well, it's a strong suggestion that if we want to be sure of it, we ought to have our next year's Christmas dinner now. <laughs> oh, they're, they're having us on. <laughs> no, sir, I think they're blowing us up. I don't think you believe that for a minute, Chief. Oh? Huh? Why not, sir? I haven't yet had your application for compassionate leave. Oh, well! <laughs> well, it's a funny thing you should mention, it. Because <laughs> I've got it right here. <laughs> the great tragical, sir, in my family, a very great tragical in the family, said my aunt Chloe, she fell off a second-hand camel. <laughs> She's your smiling, so she did. She, she fell off a second-hand camel whilst passing under the pier in Cairo. <laughs> What's more, she did untold damage to her left... Uh, uh, ingenious, but no, Chief. But, sir, her uh, uh, medical advisors are expecting a lopsided lip. <laughs> so she's asking, she's, she's begging, sir, for John Caesar. What, your aunt Chloe or the camel? <laughs> uh, <laughs> must know, sir, the camel. <laughs> well, which one did untold damage to her left... Uh, um, uh, uh, both of them, sir. Oh, it's nasty. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had an uncle who once wrecked his right turn. Uh, yeah, very easily done, sir. Very easily. <laughs> yes, especially riding a second-hand camel, I presume. Yes, very hazardistical, sir. Yes, very hazardistical. Mm, I can imagine. Come in. Excuse me, sir, but do you know who arranged for this draft to be used for testing the new radar? Well, Commander Purvey, I believe. Hello, why? Um, oh, nothing, sir, except that I've just had a phone call from a girlfriend of mine who's on the CNC staff at Portsmouth. Oh, not bad news, I trust. Well, yes. she hasn't damaged her left... Uh, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> nothing like that. It's rather odd, really. She just rang up to say she'd seen we'd been selected for the test, so good luck and goodbye. <laughs> oh, isn't that nice of her? But fancy taking the trouble to ring up just to say, um... Sir? Well, Mr. Phillips? About my compassionate leave. <laughs> uh, you remember my uncle wrecked his right... Uh, hey, wait a minute. <clears throat> There's a flaming liberty. My aunt and her camel did untold damage. They left you uh, long before your uncle and his right... Uh... Uh, forget it. <laughs> Neither of you are going anywhere. We're all going to wallow in the, um... Together. Well, I'd rather not, sir, if you don't mind. Now, well, cheer up, Pert. We, we, we might all get promoted. If by promotion you mean set up a flaming great height, you might well be correct, sir. There's something else, too, sir. Mm, I was afraid there would be. They've issued a warning to shipping. Why? I'm not going to see. <laughs> That's not what I meant. No, possibly not, Heather. But it, it was an understandable mistake. Mm. Well, apparently, Admiralty have decided that all shipping must keep well clear of this island as experiments of an uncertain nature are about to take place. Uh, well, they put things so delicate, don't they? <laughs> For experiments of an uncertain nature. Read one false move and its caps off, which way do we go? <laughs> do you think there really is going to be some risk involved, sir? Well, it begins to look rather like it, Heather. Oh. Well, um... I wasn't going to mention it, sir, but just lately I've had a peculiar sort of knock in my left arm. Um... No, Heather. <laughs> you can't have leave. Oh. Hello, number one here. Jetty Guardian, sir. There's a craft approaching with a shocking lot of old iron on it, sir. Well, tell him to go back, back and get a better lot. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Ghostin? <laughs> Ghostin, are you there? Yes, I'm here. But with all due respect, I'm sure, I'd be obliged if you didn't take the mickey out of my English, sir, as it's only temporary. <laughs> when we get home rule, I hope I shall be able to phone up and make myself abundantly clear in the Gaelic. And in the meantime, there's a craft approaching with a shocking lot of old iron on it, sir. Oh, uh, thank you. What's going on, sir? The bard of Bangor just read me three chapters of How Green Was My Goldstein. <laughs> uh, hello, are you sure this craft is coming here? Positive, sir. She's only about a mile off now. I think she's come from Portsmouth, sir. Well, what makes you think that? Well, I can hear Commander Povey as clear as a bell. Well, old Thundergast, what's he doing with a load of old iron? Uh, I beg pardon for interrupting, sir, but uh, 
Perhaps it's the new invention. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Pertwee. <laughs> O'Lion was invented years ago. <laughs> if I had an old iron, I'd hit you with it. Uh, hello, sir. Permission to start gunnery practice and blow it out of the water accidentally, sir. No, Goldstein. If you hit it, you might blow us out of the water accidentally, too. We'll all come down to the jetty at once. Well, Professor Watson, uh, can we assume that you have assembled all your equipment satisfactorily now? Oh, Wava, down to the last nut and... Bolt? No, the last nut. There's a bolt missing. <laughs> I don't suppose it'll matter. Not matter, sir? No, if it blows up, there'll be a lot more than that missing, won't there? <laughs> yeah, including us. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful thing, a sense of humor. <laughs> uh, may we ask what time you intend to start operating this machine, sir? I don't. Ah, well, that's a relief. Although carting it over here and setting the bloomy thing up on the jetty seems a bit pointless if you're not going to... Uh... I meant I'm not going to operate it. You are. I say, are we really? Oh, I, I can hardly wait to start trying to... Uh... Now, just a minute. <laughs> Why aren't you going to operate it? Because I you shall be as far away as possible. Oh, oh, I see. Hmm. Do you mind if we all come with you? <laughs> now, what Professor Watson means is that he and I will be on a radar training ship as far away as possible, and you'll be here to direct us back. Oh, well, I'd much rather play swaps. <laughs> uh, excuse me, a big pardon. Oh, uh, well, Chief. Uh, the machinery's all set up, sir. Permission to go aboard, sir. Go aboard what? Anything, sir. <laughs> Anything at all. I'm not fussy, just so long as it's... Not going to hang a belt. No, Chief. You'll remain here and assist us to operate this thing. How do we operate this little lot? We've never seen the perisher before. Sir. Oh, simplicity itself. <coughs> it operates in exactly the same way as normal radar set, with which your navigating officer, Mr. Um, Phillips, will be fully conversant, of course. <laughs> Now, what's the matter? You all look as though you've been hit by a bus. <laughs> on you eat! Um, on you eat! Hands and up, sir. Where's my pencil? Right now, then. We, the undersigned, witness that this is the last will and testament of Chief Petty Officer... I don't bother, Chief. Honestly, I don't know what you're all worrying about. It'll just be a case of trial and error. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, time we moved off, Professor. Right, oh. As soon as we're on station, we'll call you up and I'll give you instructions on how to start transmitting the beam. Oh, did you have to rush off so soon? Yeah, well, wouldn't you like to sit down here for a year or two, sir? <laughs> no, no, Chief Pretty Officer Patwee. That's a pity officer. Oh, a pity. The sooner we get started, the better now. Uh, so you'll maintain a strict security guard on the apparatus at all times, of course, number one. Oh, naturally, sir. I don't. I don't want anything to happen to it. Uh, then I should take Mr. Phillips with you, sir. <laughs> I do wish you'd all stop fussing. I'll soon get the hang of it. You know my motto. If at first you don't succeed, harps will be issued shortly after. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. That's what... No, no, no. No, no. I, I meant if, if at first you don't try again, then... Uh, Suck it and see. <laughs> uh, if, uh, oh, come on, uh, Professor, for goodness sake, we'll never get this test started. You know what it is, John? Sit to you. You know what it is? This is. It's a flaming liberty. That's what it is. What is? Getting the perch for your guard duty, of course. I wouldn't have said it was a liberty. I would have said it was a blooming miracle. Yeah, true. The last third week to do a guard was my grandfather at the Battle of Pongo Land. I suppose the ship he was on was sunk. It was. That's why we've never done a guard since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was having a kip and the natives blew the ship from under him. <laughs> what happened? It woke him up. <laughs> Go on. Mm. I reckon Mr. Phillips stands a good chance of waking up all the Pertwees for hundreds of miles with this radar thing this morning. Look, do you mind, Johnson? Look, do you mind? I prefer not to think about it. If they, if they hadn't put us on guard, I'd have the perfect solution to this problematical. What was that? I was going to whip the perisher and chuck it in the sea. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Guarding it makes it a bit tricky, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. 
You know, I don't like this. I don't. I don't like it. Don't like it at all. Look, it, it's omnibus. That's what it is. <laughs> it's omnibus, Johnson. Look, if the thing works, Mr. Phillips will blow it up because he doesn't know what he's doing. Or if Mr. Phillips sorts it out proper, it'll probably blow up because it doesn't work right anyway. <laughs> now, you can't win. Chief, eh? how am I all for compassionate leave? Because <laughs> I just remembered my mum Min's caught her left ear... Uh... No, you can't. <laughs> Well, it's very painful, you know, catching your left ear... Uh... I don't care! You're not having leave. Well, three years ago, she cleared her right one on the banister. She couldn't go shopping. <laughs> Help her! Well, I told you before. We're not interested in your mum Min's left ear or her right ear. Uh... My dad, Dan, is. <laughs> your dad, Dan, is? Yeah. Why? Well, he had to do the shopping when she cleared her right ear... Uh... And he can do it now she caught her left ear. Uh... No, he can't. Why not? His right to uh, was run over by a tram yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Will you call cover about your mum, Min, and your dad, Dan? If you insist. I do, Johnson. Oh, very well. But you're rotten, you are. Rotten? Yeah. If ever a rot was ten, it's yours. Ah, <laughs> dear. <laughs> Just watch it, that's all. What? Here, look out. Here comes number one. And our pinpointing genius with the pinpointed head. Morning, Chief. All quiet? Yeah, so far, sir. But Mr. Phillips hasn't touched anything yet, sir. I heard that. And I'll have you know, I've been up all night so that I could swat up on radar from my book. Splendid. And what have you learnt? Just that I don't know where my book is. <laughs> I've looked everywhere. Well, I could have told you, sir. I could have told you, I know, it's in the wardrobe. But it can't be. I looked in there and I couldn't see it. No, you wouldn't, sir. It's under the leg of the table that wobbles. <laughs> oh, really? What stupid nit put it there? You did, Mr. Phillips. You said you were sick of having lapfuls of brown Windsor soup. Oh, yes, so I did. It worked, too. Well, it didn't. Sitting opposite you, now I keep getting lapfuls of brown Windsor soup. <laughs> well, as long as neither of you drinks the muck, you're all right. I've seen what cookhouse Clara puts in it. I've done worse than that. I've seen cookhouse Clara. <laughs> yeah, and she's seen you, so you quit. <laughs> Who is that? Cookhouse Clara? <laughs> no, it's the receiver on this thing. It must be old Thunderguts trying to get through. Well, it couldn't be, sir. It wasn't loud enough. <laughs> well, that's more like it. That's him, all right. Now, now, let's switch on the rest of it. Well, go on, Mr. Phillips. Switch on the rest of it. Oh, just a second, sir. I, I just want to finish this first. Now then, um, we, the undersigned, witness that this is the last will and testament of... I knew it. I knew this would happen. We steam miles and miles out into the Atlantic, and the fools won't answer when we call them. Oh, I feel an absolute Charlie. <laughs> I just don't understand what's gone wrong. I was completely positive I checked everything. I just don't understand why it doesn't work. Mm, I can tell you that. I don't suppose those good-for-nothing, lead-swinging layabouts are up yet. Yes, but what about that chap on guard duty? Oh, that was Chief Petty Officer Pertwee, and he's certain to be asleep. Oh, no, what makes you think that? Well, my grandfather was on board a certain ship at the Battle of Pongoland. It seems the natives... <coughs> ah, they're coming through, they're coming through. Hello, hello, are you receiving me? Good gracious, so I am. Oh, well done, Leslie. Uh, this is Professor Watson. Are you ready to start the test? Well, we're as ready as we're ever likely to be. Good, good. Now listen carefully. First, I want you to press switches marked B and M. B and N? Yes, I got that. Hang on. No, 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 not P and N. I said B and M. B for Baker, M for... Hello, hello, hello. B for Baker, M for... M for Mac. It up. <laughs> what's happened? What's happened? Oh, it's not what's happened, Commander Povey. It's what's going to happen. He's pressed the wrong switches. He would. I'd have bet on it. Any time I'd have bet on it. Hello, hello, I say. What am I supposed to do next? Uh, hello. Something the matter already, Mr. Phillips? Yes, the whole thing seems to have gone dead. Perhaps it wants another shilling in it, sir. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Why didn't I think of... 
Oh, no. I, you don't catch me like that. <laughs> it went dead his end, so he's the one who's got to put the shilling in. <laughs> well, all I can say is that I hope he's right. Because my bet is we've only got about 11 pence between us. Sure you press the right switches, Mr. Phillips? Oh, rather, sir. P for Phillips and N for Naughty. Yes, well, Naughty Phillips seems to be cut off all right. It's sort of got a peep out of it. Jetty, number one here. Jetty, guard here, sir. Goldstein, what are you playing at where you're only a couple of feet away from you? Why don't you come over? Oh, not likely, sir. I'm the other side of the wall and I'm not coming your side for anything. Oh, very well. What is it? Aircraft approaching, sir. Hmm, we had noticed. What about it? Well, it's an airliner, sir. Bit off his course, isn't he? Hello, London. G-A-B-C-D calling. Flight 64 from New York on approach. Who said that? That flaming machine did, sir. Well, what's it talking about? <laughs> Why don't you ask it? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, hello, hello. Sub Lieutenant Phillips here. Whom? Phillips. Oh, hello, Phil. <laughs> Say, what's going on? I didn't ask for a talk down. Mr. Phillips? Yeah, I don't think I feel very well. <laughs> Hello, London. Ici Air France, flight 67 from Paris, on approach. Lummy, lummy, another of them. Mr. Phillips, you're on their radio beam. You're bringing all the aircraft here instead of London Airport. But they can't land here. Well, if you don't do something, they're liable to try. Oh, no, Lord. Uh, hello? Uh, go away. Hello, <laughs> uh, hello, hello. Uh, fly somewhere else, hello. Fly somewhere else, do you hear? Um, hello, hello. Mr. Phillips, sir. Look, why don't you try... Shoo! <laughs> or you might even try... I say, fellow boy, get me down. I've got a date. Do you mind, monsieur? My fuel is running out. Hello, comrade London. This is the glorious people's aircraft number USS. Mr. Phillips, switch that thing off. Press something before we're up to our necks in aircraft. Well, Mr. Phillips, have you found a switch you like yet? I hate the sight of all of them. <laughs> Cheer up, Mr. Phillips. Sir, there's only a few more to try. Mm, just as well, Chief. He's diverted every aircraft from here to China, told the North Pole Expedition to turn back, and the Irish ferry boat has tried to land here three times. <laughs> With all due respect, sir, four times they're back. <laughs> Go away, you've got the wrong message. <laughs> yeah, very likely. <laughs> Don't call us if we'll try not to call you. <laughs> try another one, quick. We must contact Povey and the professor. Oh, you're back, are you, Phil? <laughs> Listen, I know what you're up to. You're keeping me mucking about up here so you can take my date out. No, honestly, no, it's all a mistake. I, I, I can explain. Please, monsieur, long live l'amour. But my fuel, she is almost gone. Well, switch it off for a bit until I think of something. <laughs> Hello, comrade London. What are you trying to do? Sabotage the glorious people's plane by keeping me... That's my lot. I'm not touching another thing. Why, what? Here's Heather. What on earth are you two up to? Up to my eyeballs. <laughs> uh, uh, why, Heather? Well, Mr. Ebenezer Poetry's just been on the telephone. Oh, Nunky! What did he want? Oh, nothing much. He just asked if you could put in a commercial for his tug. A commercial for his tug? <laughs> yes, sir. From time to time, you've been on the television. <laughs> <laughs> You mean we've been actually on the telly? Yes. Good gracious. Uh, Heather? Yes, sir? Uh, which channel? Oh, BBC, sir. <laughs> I say, that was a bit of luck, wasn't it? <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Phillips, sir. The morons of Moon are sweeping up from the sea again. <laughs> oh, lummy, so they are. Uh, uh, go away. Uh, not today, thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> Likewise, I'm sure. <laughs> For goodness sake, establish contact with old Thunderguts, Mr. Phillips. All right, he's only got two switches left now, sir. That's right, B and M. And I'm not touching them. <laughs> well, allow me, sir, it can only blow us up. Oh, you're such a comfort, Pertwee. Hello? Hello? Commander Povey calling base? Yes, Commander Povey. Commander Povey. Oh, Lummy, you've done it. Oh, it's old Thunderguts. Yes, it's old Thunderguts, all right. <laughs> What on earth have you been paying at, you stupid, bungling, dunderheaded, half-baked, know-nothing nincompoops? Well, a technical hitch, sir. Uh, we couldn't find the right switches. I'll say you couldn't. Do you know what you've done? Well, we've got a pretty fair idea. <laughs> here, let me talk to him. Uh, over to you, sir, and welcome. Hello, hello! Uh, number one here, sir, could you speak up? You're very faint. Blimey, he must be at the North Pole. <laughs> and to you lunatics, I am at the North Pole! <laughs> Good gracious. He must have got that message for the expedition. But whatever you do, Mr. Phillips, sir, don't ask him what the weather's like. Thanks to your meddling with the professor's invention, you steered us out here at full speed and I'm freezing. Do you hear me? Freezing. Uh, hang on, sir. I'll get you out of there. I I'll press another switch. No, no, no. Please, please, no. Just a minute. There's a, there's a chap here in a rubber dinghy. Uh, hi there. Who are you? Pardon, monsieur. Could you tell me the way to Paris? <laughs> My plane, she ran out of fuel. Lummy, how did he manage to paddle all that way? <laughs> switch it off, sir. Switch it off. Blow a fuse. Do something. Because I've got a nasty feeling I know he's going to turn up there next. Yeah, pull the main plug out, sir. What? Oh, yes, oh, yes, right. Now, why did we think of that before? This does seem a pity. What do we do now? Well, with all due respect, sir, may I suggest a short, sharp phone call to Admiralty, sir? And uh, reporting the operation is a complete failure, uh, through no fault of our own, but through Commander Povey's not being on correct station. Yes, excellent, Chief. That makes it Commander Povey's fault. <laughs> oh, yes, so it does, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what about old Thunderguts? I mean, we can't just leave him up the pole. <laughs> well, so I suppose we could drop a gentle hint as to his whereabouts. Eventually. Hmm. <laughs> Good idea. I say, I do hope he doesn't get frostbite in his right term. Oh, no, no, sir. Oh, no, sir, the lefts will go first. <laughs> they always do, sir. They always do. That was John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray working their passage in the Navy Lark written by Laurie Wyman. John Pertwee was the Chief Petty Officer, Leslie Phillips was the Sub-Lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the Number One. Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, the Admiral was Tenya Levens, Professor Watson was Michael Bates, Abel Seaman Johnson was played by Ronnie Barker, and Heather was Heather Chasen. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee. <laughs> the snag about keeping a secret is that the person you're sharing it with never keeps it as long as you do. This means that just when you're about to divulge it in the strictest confidence to a third person, he tells you about it first. Well, naturally, our draft all have their little secrets, too, they think. What I want to know is, who's paying for the next round, Johnson? Well, Johnson isn't. Johnson paid for the last one. And I paid for the one before that. Yeah. And there are three of us. 
<laughs> Including Toffee Goldstein, who hasn't bought around yet, but who is about to rush up to the bar with his purse in his hot little hand. <laughs> Pausing only long enough to ask us what we're going to have. Our name. Aren't you? Daffy. No. <laughs> it's all right. I'll go to the bar. I just remembered something. What? The new barmaid. <laughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. Would you mind? Thank you, missus. That's uh, all. <laughs> Miss, could I have two halves? I'm already serving, you know. No, I didn't know, actually. <laughs> All I want is That'll be three and six, thank you. Who's next? I want two halves. Do you mind, sailor? I've only got one pair of hands, you know. Yeah, I had noticed. Uh... <laughs> but I want... You Your see... usual, Mr Cavanagh. There we are. That'll be fourteen and six, thank you. Blimey, what's he drinking? A double champagne with a cherry in it? Your chance, <laughs> Who's next? I want two, uh... Well... I've forgotten now. Then would you mind getting out of the road, Jack? People are trying to get served, you know. Oh, good luck to them. I couldn't. Here, Johnson, where's our wallop? It's downstairs in a little barrel. <laughs> well, get your lady friend to pull that handle thing and get it up here. I'm thirsty. Excuse me, but I am not your fat friend's lady friend. I'm bespoke. Thank you. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> oh, do. If you must know, my intended is another naval person, but much more the normal size than your friend. <laughs> <laughs> All the nice girls love a sailor. All the nice girls. No. Hey, hey, put a sock in it, Ginger. Look who's just come in. Oh, it's Mr. Phillips. He's got Heather with him. What did I tell you? All the nice girls love a sailor. All the nice girls love a tar. Well, that's a comfort, isn't it? <laughs> good evening, you three. Uh, good evening, sir. We are just leaving. Looks as if Ginger left some time ago. <laughs> Leave him to us, sir. Certainly. Oh, and you're welcome to the legacy. <laughs> Excuse me, do any of you want serving, or is this just a naval reunion? What? Oh, yes, I do. I want, uh... Well? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I say... What this gentleman is trying to say is that he wants a pair of very dark glasses. <laughs> That's right, then I shan't be able to look at it. I, I, I mean, uh, no, I, I meant, um, that is, I, I hadn't even noticed it. Uh, I, 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 was, I was just wondering, actually. 36, 22, 36, I should think. 37, actually. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> Uh, oh, you. <laughs> uh, you. You were nearly right. Mm. I, I, I mean, what's an, what's an inch between... Um, uh, uh, do you think... <laughs> do, 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 do you think I could have a drink? I, it's got um, suddenly awfully warm in here. Sailors are all the same, aren't they, dear? I have a naval gentleman friend as a steady myself. Then you have my deepest sympathy. Oh, mine's a lot brighter than what yours is by the look of him. <laughs> now, steady. I'm not just a vacant face, you know. I, I mean, um... Is your, um, <clears throat> steady naval gentleman friend in our draft on the island? Oh, yes, he is. Very important position, too, I believe. And such a fine, upstanding chap. Honest as the day is long and never a word out of place. I think it's so important to have a man you can look up to and respect. Don't you? Oh, very. Um, what's his name? Chief Petty Officer Pertwee. Gracious. <laughs> 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 what's the matter? Do you know him? Oh, yes. We, um... <laughs> We, we know him all right, yes. It's just that it comes as a bit of a shock. What does? We're trying to think of the chief as being an honest as the day is long. Yes, the evenings never draw in that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse 
Excuse me, Mr. Phillips, sir. Miss, uh, could I have two halves? Do you mind? Proper little cue jumper, aren't you? But I only want... I'm serving this gentleman and the lady, if you don't mind. Two nice gin and tonics, wasn't it, sir? <laughs> it was, but I think we'd better forget it, don't you, Leslie? Or we missed the big feature. What? Oh, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see, yes, um... <laughs> Lummy, so we shall, yeah. Um, good night, Johnson. Good night, sir. Good night. Come on, Leslie, for goodness sake. Yes, but I, I wanted to say good night to 3722. Um, Leslie! Uh, uh, just common courtesy, you know. I... <laughs> Stores closed! Where the pair you got? <laughs> Who is it? Abel Seaman Johnson, Chief. I brought the post. Then lean on it. I'm busy. <laughs> I mean the letters. There's one for you. It comes from Sid. Who? Sid. Sid? Yeah. I can't read the rest, but it's Sid somebody. Ah, oh, all right. Hang on. <laughs> Show me. <laughs> See? That's not Sid, somebody in nicked. It's Sid in them. <laughs> I mean, pretty envelope, isn't it? Pong's elegant, too. <laughs> Pong's elegant. Cool. You know, I see what you mean. Yeah, Sybil has rather overdone the older Caro a bit, didn't she? Yeah. Well, what's she say, Chief? She says fat little Johnsons shouldn't be nosy parkers for a start. Why? Oh, nothing. I was just hoping she said she was coming down to see you and, uh, and wanted to meet you in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're getting at, fat so. But I have a feeling you're dicing with it. Well, I know you are. <laughs> now, will you stop that before you do yourself an unfortunate? <clears throat> anyway, what are you into that, Tubby? Nothing. But if Abel Seaman Johnson don't have it a bit more cushy, Abel Seaman Johnson's going to put the squeak in. Put a squeak in where? Well, either with Sybil of Sydenham or Pertwee's Poppet in the pub, I'm not fussy. <laughs> what? Here. How did you find out about my little bit of local snog? Yeah. <laughs> I went out with Ginger and Taffy last night and we overheard a little something. Oh, you did, did you? You eavesdropping great nit. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> a little more respect for Abel Seaman Johnson, if you don't mind. Oh, I'll have to put a stop to this. Ah, you built it yourself, you know. You'll have to lie on it. You shouldn't have played fast and loose with the ladies of the opposite section. Johnson, I'm warning you. Ah, that sort of old nonsense always ends up in tears. Yes, it will. We'll be crying over spilt Johnson in a minute. <laughs> oh, well, if that's your attitude, I think I'll just drop a line to a certain lady of your acquaintance in this. Uh, no, no, Johnson. No, Johnson. Uh, Johnson, no, my old friend. No, Johnson. I tell you, have the afternoon off. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're Johnson, hey, oh, there's something else. A little cigar for you. Oh, that's more like it. Uh, he lend us a couple of bob with you. I want to go to the races. Lend you a couple of bob? Are you off your great round rocker? I'm not going to lend you a couple of bob. Dear Sybil, <laughs> I feel you ought to know that a certain chief petty officer Pertwee... Ah. Blackmail. That's what it is. It's blackmail. Yeah. <laughs> now, look, look, Johnson. Now, Johnson. Yeah. Johnson. Yeah. Dear old friend, Johnson. Yeah. Comrade in arms. Yeah. Outmate. Yeah. And chum. <laughs> I'm listening. I, I want you to try and understand that any derogatorials I may have said about you were purely comments in the heat of the moment. In the heat of the moment. I see. Go on. I intend to, because right now I'm boiling. And if there's any more of this, I'll melt your lug holes with the right mouthful, so help me. <laughs> Understood, Patso? Perfectly, Tar. Dear Sybil, <laughs> I feel you ought to know that a certain chief petty officer. Belt up! 
That does it. I'm going to put the squeak into both of them now. No, 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 Johnson, no, no, Johnson, no. Uh, please, Johnson, please. <laughs> You're being hasty, Johnson. You don't understand. You don't understand at all. It's all a mistake. The lady you three heard about in the pub is purely a, a business acquaintance. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I suppose you often have to work late with her together too, eh? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Listen, listen to me, you, listen, you steaming great nit. It's through Maisie I flog certain... I flog certain... surplus stores. <laughs> yeah, I, I flog them to the pub. She took the landlord into buying from me. What did you talk her into? Nothing. Now I know you're having me on. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. She's not my type. She's not my type at all, John. No. No, we, 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 we're just not suited. Uh, no, no. Sidden and Sybil is per his bit of home comfort. Well, that's a pity, because that means my bit of blackmail's gone for a Burton, doesn't it? It does, Johnson. <sighs> Here's your two bob back. So, and I hope you enjoyed your little moment of triumph, because now it's my turn. You balloon-based, underhanded, scheming, <laughs> podgy, paunched, great, fat, grease ball. And it... Who's that? I don't know. Johnson, darling. It's me. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> Your business acquaintance wants a director's meeting. <laughs> Mr. Pertwee's residence, please come in. You're not expected. <laughs> Ever so. Johnson, Johnson, so help me. I'll flatten your fudge figure out so much, you'll be three inches wide and 84 feet high. <laughs> well, I suppose I'd better leave you two lovebirds alone. No, no, Johnson, no, 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 Johnson. <laughs> I told you before, we're just business acquaintances. Oh, stop being bashful, John Z. He's bound to know sometimes. <laughs> now what? Now I'm back in business. Two bob, please. <laughs> right, you vulture. <laughs> Oh, um, Heather, have you finished all those returns yet? I have, sir. In fact, there were so many, I feel as if I've been typing returns for a week. Oh, doesn't sound as if you regard them as many happy returns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very whimsical, I'm sure, sir. Oh, dear. You don't exactly seem to be the little ray of sunshine this morning, Heather. Fine, thank you. Never felt better. Oh, good. For a moment, I thought you were upset about something. No. Just the morning after the ghastly evening out before. Oh, you were with Mr. Phillips. Yes, but Mr. Phillips wasn't exactly with me. Well, let's face it, Mr. Phillips is never exactly with anybody. Hmm, well, this was rather different. I wouldn't have minded, but all he could say was, 37, can you beat it? <laughs> Can you? <laughs> Frankly, no. <laughs> Hello, main office. This is Commander Purvey, Portsmouth. Is there a Commander Stanton there? Uh, um, well, no, sir, not just at the uh, moment. That serves me right for asking. He never is. Give me number one. Uh, one moment, sir. It's Commander Purvey for you, sir. Yes, I was afraid it was. Uh, hello, number one here. Number one. I have grown to realise that paperwork is not the strong point of your draft. But after seeing this last lot, I'd be obliged if you'd tell me the name of the game you're playing at. I don't think I quite understand, sir. And I don't quite understand the last lot of indents that came in from Chief Petty Officer Pertwee, either. Oh, uh, what are they for, sir? Crisps. <laughs> Crisps. Crisps. One hundred and fifty. Tins of potato crisps. We never have crisps. Well, what's going on with them, for Pete's sake? Well, perhaps he's um, salting them away. <laughs> oh, good grief. Number one, I'm coming over there at once, and when I get there, I'll want to see Pertwee and know exactly what's been going on. 
I intend to go through those stores and all the returns with a fine tooth comb. Yes, I'll tell the chief at once, sir. And why, Admiral, to put up with this fat dash where you go about things is beyond me. Uh, excuse me, sir. Let's see who that is, Heather. Right, sir. Um, you were saying, uh, Commander Purvey? What on earth is going on? Am I to understand that it's impossible for you to even hold a simple telephone? Um, hello, Heather. Anybody about? I've got a visitor. Hello. Les is showing me round. Hmm, so I see. I thought you'd already been. <laughs> now, now, ladies, please. Uh, just a minute. Sir. What's going on? Uh, this is Maisie, sir. I'm showing her one or two things. Or vice versa. <laughs> yes, 37. Can you beat it? <laughs> I mean, um, I'm mm, trying to listen to Commander Povey. Oh, why not listen to us, sir? He can't beat 37, 22. <laughs> yes, that's true, I suppose. Heather, remind me to hang up when old Thunderguts stops. Aye, sir. Mr. Phillips, may I ask why you're showing the lady round? Well, because she doesn't know where round, of course. Oh, come now. <laughs> I meant, why isn't the chief conducting the tour? Don't mention that man to me. We're through. Oh, well, that was a bit sudden, wasn't it? Uh, well, let me explain. I sort of walked into it. Yeah, you sort of always do. <laughs> yes, I do, don't I? Mm. But it wasn't me this time, sir. It was Johnson. Fat, so? He do. He dropped one about Sybil of Sydenham. Before the chief could tell Johnson to belt up, Maisie told the chief to belt up. I never want to see him again. Well, neither do I, but you're the lucky one. I shall have to. Hello. Hello, number one. But say something, can't you? Uh, oh, uh, uh... I ask you, a hundred and fifty tins of crisps. Why, it's ludicrous. I'm coming over there at once. Uh, quite so. We, we'll look into it. Um... What on earth is going on? I might have understand Oh, we'd better it. carry on with the old tour, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Maisie, old girl. Hmm? No, thank you. I want to get back to the pub. I want to have a word with my father. He'll sort that two-timing petty officer of yours out all right. No, no, don't do anything hasty. No, it might be your turn next, Casanova. <laughs> the heavyweight champion my dad was. Half murdered the last bloke that stood me up. Hey, Les. Things I'm no longer bespoke. What are you doing this evening? Three rounds with your father, probably. <laughs> Yes, nothing I'd like better than getting the gloves on with a heavy... Wait a minute. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like... You'd like to see Maisie back, sir. <laughs> I've got Commander Povey here on the phone. Oh, yes, sir. So you have, yes. Well, I shouldn't worry about that then, sir. I mean, he'll still be on it when you get back. <laughs> yes, perhaps you're right. After you, Maisie. Yeah, who isn't? <laughs> Yourself, you know. I have a good mind to see you. You had to open your big mouth, didn't you, Johnson? You just had to say something disasterful. Well, it, was, it wasn't my fault. You didn't tell me to belt up quick enough. Well, rest assured, I'll shut in future. I cook up and I try to think what I'm going to do. But what's your problem then? I thought you liked Sybil best anyway. I do! I like Sybil. It's the little arrangement with the pub I'm worried about. You fouled that up good and proper, you blubbermouth. Oh dear, well, I hadn't thought of that. I've got 150 tins of crisps turning up. <laughs> you say, Paul, look, what, what am I going to do with them? That's what I like to know. What am I going to do with them? So would I, Chief. And that makes two of us. <laughs> and it was <laughs> Well, where did you spring from? I mean, I mean, uh, no, I mean, well, well, nice of you to drop in, sir. How did you? <laughs> For once, Chief, you inadvertently left the door open. Oh, no, he didn't, sir, no. I was the last one in, so it must have been me that... <laughs> I wish I was dead. <laughs> Probably soon will be. <laughs> You're having quite a day, aren't you? Well, even if he isn't, I'm pretty certain I'm going to. Oh? Something amiss, sir? <laughs> Just a trifle, Chief. Crisps. <laughs> trifle and crisps? <laughs> well, who wants to eat I tri didn't say that, you idiot. I'm talking about that 150 tins of crisps you indented for. Crisps? Oh, crisps! Psst. Well, 
I'm waiting for an explanation. So am I. Just a minute. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, yes, sir. I've got it. Yeah, crisps. Yes, crisps. Cool. Uh, oh, no, it, it's, it, it is. It's a code name, sir. A code name? Yes. What for? Crisps. Wait, no. <laughs> uh, a code name for, for, for spare parts, sir. That's right. Crisps. C R I S P cathode ray isotopes switch plug sausages. Uh, switch plug sausages. <laughs> are they red? Yes. And um, why are they in tins, may I ask? Oh, well, oh. Why they in tins? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, we, 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 obviously, sir, they're radioactive. They are, yes, the crisps. You, you can't ship them any other way, sir. Radioactive. Yeah, and the little package of salt to stop them going rusty. <laughs> What's it? I'm going to say something to you. Oh, I've done it again, haven't I? Uh, you have. In fact, you both have. Chief, get over to the main office at once and send this other idiot on a route march to get his weight down. Hey, but, but the stores that are coming. Oh, me. yes, you can. I'm taking charge of these stores for the time being, and I'm going to examine everything until I find out what's been going on. I'd rather you didn't, sir. No, I mean, it'll lead to a lot of unpleasantness and harsh verbosities. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Now, hop it, the pair of you. No, but sir, Out, you sure. have. Out! Out! Now then, this is the chance I've been waiting for for a long, long time. Right, where is he? I beg your pardon, sir. This is Admiralty property. Where is he? Where's the man in charge of these stores? Well, I am. Are you? Right. Well, I'm Maisie's father. <laughs> <laughs> We've not met before, but you're going to get the iodine of your life. <laughs> what? Oh, but, but there must be some mistake. No, 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 no. no. I'll oh, teach away. you. I'll teach you to go round jilting the likes of my matey. Uh, keep off. Get off. Oh. No, no, no. Hey, no, no, please. Oh, stop it. No, no, go in. Go in. Hello, main office. This is Maisie speaking. Quick, I've got to know which hospital is Johnsy in. What? But the chief's not in hospital. He isn't? No. You don't mean him? Oh. Uh, here, uh, let me talk to her. Uh, hello, number one here. When's the funeral, sir? <laughs> when I told my father about me being jilted, I never thought he'd go up there and... Uh, uh, just a minute. Do I gather your father's up here? Yes. He went straight to the stores to fill John Z in. Oh, Lord. Uh, I, I'll ring you back. Uh, Mr. Phillips, get down to the stores at once before anything... Water! Water! <laughs> Call out the guard! It's a massacre! <laughs> Tell me, come on, the povey. I've been attacked by some lunatic who says he's somebody called Maisie's father. He's wrecked the stores. I, I'll never be able to check them now. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Oh, what a lovely shame. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean uh, it's a pity. No, I'm, I didn't mean that. Sir. I mean, it's a pity, sir. It's a pity because everything was in order, sir. Of course, it will now. Stop or... gloating, Pertwee. There's still the matter of an indent for all those crisps in my office. You can't explain that away. I'll try, sir. <laughs> um, type is silly, sir. Hello, number one here. Jetty Guard, yes, sir. What do you want me to do with them, sir? Do with what? Well, a launch from main stores just delivered 150 tins of crisps, sir. What? You mean the crisps are here? No, no. Yeah, but, but, but they can't be. I, I stopped the Indians. I, I, I'm sure I did. Apparently, you didn't, sir. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I mean, if they're here, I mean, that means you must have initialed your approval on the indent, sir. But it's impossible. I, I, I can't have done it. I'm sure I can't have done it. Slight slip in the office work, would you say, Chief? 
Oh, very slipshod, sir, yes. <laughs> Lord, you slackness is no excuse. Sir. Oh, I don't know. None of us are inflammable, you know. <laughs> if their lordships find out, I, I, I'll be court martialed. This is terrible. I, I must get back at once. Yeah, you do that, sir. Uh, but help yourself to a bag of crisps on the way, sir. There's no extra charge for the salt. <laughs> That was Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, Goldstein was Tony Evans, Heather was Heather Chasen, Maisie was played by June Tobin, and Ginger was Michael Bates. And the recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. The British are famed for being able to weather a storm, with the exception of my Aunt Mildred, who at the first clap of thunder crouches under the stairs and knits something that doesn't fit anybody. <laughs> However, when it rains on Commander Povey, it's doubtful if any storm could weather his raging fury. Look at me! Look at me! I, 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 I'm absolutely soaked! Well, I'm pretty wet myself. <laughs> Nobody will deny that, Mr. Phillips. I, I just don't understand how you managed to get so wet, Commander Purvey. It was easy. Thanks to that fool of yours on Jetty Guard, I fell into the sea. <laughs> ah, yes, that would account for it. <laughs> the sea's very wet around here. Yes, it's um, probably the water in it. <laughs> <laughs> number one, this is no laughing matter. Oh. I was sabotaged, number one, sabotaged. My coxswain had got the launch as close as possible, and then that idiot Goldstein held his hand out for me to grab when I jumped. Well, what was wrong with that, sir? Oh, nothing. But when I did jump, he took his hand away again. <laughs> oh, what a shame. <laughs> What uh, brought you over here in weather like this anyway, sir? A rather disturbing conversation I had with a customs official. Oh, really, sir? What were you trying to smuggle? <laughs> I wasn't your fool, but somebody in this locality is. Oh, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, who, who have we got in this draft who'd be likely to go in for, for large-scale smuggling or... Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> We have got one. <laughs> Hello, number one here. Oh, is Commander Povey still with you, sir? I'd say he was against me, actually, Heather. <laughs> oh. <laughs> droll, sir. The Admiral would like to speak to him, sir. Really? Well, there's no accounting for taste, is there? Hang on. It's the Admiral for you, sir. What? The Admiral? Oh, good gracious. Sir. Hello, sir. Commander Povey here. And may I say, this is an unexpected pleasure, and what a delight it is to hear from you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now I'll put you through to the Admiral. You know, really, I... Hello? Hello? Hey, I've been cut off. Now, where did everybody go? Hey! Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, Commander Povey here. Oh, don't interrupt, Povey. I've been cut off. <laughs> you haven't, sir. This is Commander Povey. Uh, well, put him on, will you? This is the Admiral. Good grief. Every week he gets worse. What's that? Speak to his nurse. <laughs> Who hit him? Well, nobody hit me, sir. Bad show on your part, Povey. Senior officers aren't supposed to indulge in fisticuffs, you know. Who won? Well, nobody fought anyone, sir. Caught him a fourpenny one. <laughs> well, good luck to you. 
Now stop nattering, Povey. This is urgent. I've had some moron from Trinity House on the blower. You've had what, sir? Yeah, they want some help getting one of their keepers off the Clod Willy Rock Lighthouse. <laughs> Chap's living on biscuits. You mean marooned over there? Macaroons are pretty good. <laughs> How should I know what sort of biscuits they are? Well, who cares anyway? They just want us to get the poor blighter off the lighthouse. Quite, sir. I tell you what, as you're on the island, you better send Troutbridge. Troutbridge? Send Troutbridge? By Jove, that's an idea. Yes, send Troutbridge. <laughs> but be quick about it, Poby. Uh, Goodbye. Yeah, but hello, hello, sir. I, I didn't. Hello, hello, hello. Hang up as usual. You've got to put to sea at once. Put to sea, sir? In this weather? It's rough. Very rough, Mr. Phillips, but I gather we're going just the same. You are? You are to attempt to get the keeper off the Clod Willie Rock Lighthouse. Oh, do you think we should, sir? I mean, isn't that where the chap lives? <laughs> I mean, evicting a complete stranger is a pretty serious he, thing. He wants to come off, you blithering idiot. He's finished his term of duty. One more, and you'll probably have finished yours, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I, I, I still don't like it. Yes, I don't imagine the chief will either. He's been looking a bit touchy and rather anxious for the past few days, in any case. <laughs> Put the wiggly bit on the rain bit and clout. <laughs> Put the thick bit on the wobbly bit and clout. Johnson. Put the straight bit on the flat bit and clout. Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> yes, Chief. Johnson, if you don't stop that. I'll put my flat bit on your round bit and cow. <laughs> so help me, I will. All right, then be like that. But if you can't put up with the noise of Abel Seaman Johnson's on his toil, then Abel Seaman Johnson's not going to take you for a flip when his do-it-yourself doings is done. <laughs> a flip? What are you making for Drake's sake, an eggnog? <laughs> Nog at all. I'm just making an aeroplane. Oh, is that all? For a moment, I thought you... Johnson. What? Johnson, have you got him again, son? Eh? Have you? You can't go round making area planes in the stores, you know. Oh, I thought of that. I shan't put the wings on till I get it outside. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind holding the door open while I wheel it no, in. I didn't mean that. I meant that number one would do his fine old fanciful nut. If he opens that door and finds a puss moth, Stared at him in the puss. <laughs> oh, that's all right, Chief. It won't take me long to finish. But you've only just started. You don't know the first thing about area monotorticologically, me fine. <laughs> I don't have to. It's all here in me plans. It's a completely revolutionary design, you know. Yeah, it must be. Where'd you get these plans from, anyway? Oh, I sent for them from the Working Man's Aviary Club. <laughs> Aviary Club? You mean Aviation Club? No, oh, Aviary. Let me see those plans. Give him... Here you are. Ah, look, you, you steaming nit! This isn't for an area plane. It's for a whacking great bird cage. <laughs> what? Well, he must have made a mistake, mustn't he? Who'd want a flying bird cage? <laughs> I've a good mind to make you build it. And I could lock you up in it and hang you in my window. You do, and I'll tweet. <laughs> I will. I'll tweet, tweet, tweet. Pretty Johnson, pretty boy. <laughs> I'll belt up, you great big pudgy budgy. <laughs> I'll say a rude word in front of the vicar. <laughs> you do, and I'll bang you in the oven if you don't shut up. Oh, mate, if I hadn't got enough problems already. What is your trouble, then? What's me, what's me trouble? What's me trouble? What is your trouble? Well, it's the weather, of course. As Pierre got to sail over here from Calais with my watch in a storm like this. Has Pierre been repairing your watch, then? No, not exactly. He's bringing me a new one. Oh. Along with 749 others. <laughs> yeah. 300 alarms, 
A scale model of Big Ben and rural girl. <laughs> Blimey, you ought to have got here on time with that lot on board. <laughs> I know one thing. Pierre ought to have been here yesterday, and now I don't know where he's got to. Well, perhaps he's sunk like you. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're such a comfort when John's is in the muck, aren't you? Hello. I wonder who that is. It's probably Davy Jones complaining about his locker being cluttered up with clocks and watches. <laughs> Do you mind? Uh, um, hello? Uh, Mr. Pertwee's out. Can I take a message? Yes, please, Chief. Uh, right, oh, sir. Uh, what? Your... Oh, I mean, uh... oh, I mean, it's you, sir. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Chief, have trout bridge made ready. We're putting to sea at once. Aye? What, in this weather? In this weather. I understand from their lordships that it's quite in order to put to sea in frigates, even if the sun isn't shining. Oh, and then again. Hey. <laughs> To take a relief keeper to the Clod Willie Rock Lighthouse and attempt to get the present keeper off. Well, well, it's not my place to say, sir, but why bother to disturb the present keeper on a day like this? I agree, Chief. You're perfectly right. I am, sir. Yes, it's not your place to say. <laughs> now get Troutbridge made ready at once. I'll see you aboard. Oh, I see. Bung the old left hand down a bit. <laughs> Bung the old left hand down a bit, it is, Sam. <laughs> well, Mr. Proudfoot, shouldn't be long now. I imagine the present keeper will be relieved to see you. Oh, no, he won't. <laughs> he only took the job to get away from his wife. <laughs> What did I hit? <laughs> Relax, Mr. Phillips. It was only thunder. Only thunder, he says. <laughs> it frightens the life out of me. Excuse me, sir, but uh, how much longer before we sight Clod Willie Rock Lighthouse? Well, any time now, Chief. You're in a busting hurry to get back, aren't you? Not off. Oh, no, I mean... Uh, <laughs> no, I, mean I mean, don't chaff, sir. I would... Bridge number one here. Uh, starboard look out here, sir. Clod Willie Rock Lighthouse Head, sir. You sure? Well, if it isn't, somebody's mucking about with a dirty great torch. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, can I take a pot shot at it just to let him know where he are, like? Certainly not. Uh, well, it would be good practice, sir. No! No, I should have to have a word with the M.O. about Goldstein. He always wants to take pot shots at everything. Well, it's uh, a ready to sir. <laughs> uh, his, uh, his father ran a coconut shy and Taffy's been trying to go around better ever since. I don't want to interfere. Good. <laughs> How are we doing, Mr. Phillips? That's what I was going to say. We're getting a bit close to the lighthouse. I say, so we are. What nice curtains you've got. <laughs> I made them myself. Did you really? How clever of you. I must say, they look all Stop engines, nice. Chief. Stop mm. engines. Do you mind, sir? I was chatting to, um... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, lummy. Stop engines, Chief, sir. Mr. Phillips, you pick the dandiest times to have a chat. Look where we are. Yeah, another couple of feet and we could have emptied the uh, keeper's dustbin for him. <laughs> what for? The council are supposed to... <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are a bit close, aren't we? The bridge, number one here. Starboard look out here, sir. I just opened my eyes again and I can see the keeper, sir. <laughs> well, what's he doing? Well, he's still crouching with his hands over his head, waiting for the fang, sir. <laughs> yes, I don't blame him. 
Stand by to load a boat, Chief. Oh, I said, who's going, sir? Well, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Proudfoot, of course, and yourself. Oh, well, I'd rather not, sir. Thanks all the same now. It's a bit rough, sir. <laughs> yes, on second thought, you'd better take Abel Seymour Johnson with you as ballast. If Fatso doesn't keep you on an even keel, nothing will. <laughs> Off you go. Bridge, number one here. Me again, sir. Uh, Seaboat being slung aboard, sir. All the others are on their way up to the bridge again, sir. Oh, good show. Thank you, Goldstein. Well, come on in, all of you. I'm having a tot sent up. Get your oil skins off. Uh, thank you, sir. Most kind. Cool. We're fair perished. Yes, you must be. Well done, all of you. Uh, well, it was, it was nothing, sir. Just staunch devotion to duty in times of nature's <laughs> violence. <laughs> In the interests of the service, sir, it's always a pleasure to acquit oneself of one's obligatories and remain at one's post. When many a week a man might be a broken reed and bend before the force of the invasion. <laughs> no, sir, it's, it's enough to know that a grateful nation is beyond one's humble efforts to uphold the dignity of oh, the Oh, turn it up. <laughs> he does go on a bit, doesn't he? Yes. He does, if you don't... Mr. Proudfoot, what are you doing aboard again? You're supposed to be on the lighthouse. Tell me, how did that happen? Well, Mr. Phillips shoved the boat off again before I could get out. I see. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, why didn't... <laughs> chief. Sir? Lower a boat, Chief. Go and get Mr. Phillips back. <laughs> Take Mr. Proudfoot with you again and try and land him this time. Oh, I said. Bridge, number one here. Guess who, sir? <laughs> Seaboat being stored aboard again, sir. The old keeper's having a meal below, sir, and the others are on their way up to the bridge again. Sir. Good. It's time we got away from here. I, I'm, so, I'm so through. I, I was afraid you'd sail off and leave me there. It was a tremendous temptation. Now that <laughs> Do you think we could get underway now? It's getting pretty dark, and I'd rather like to get away from these rocks. Oh, right, sir. Uh, slow start on both, and right hand down a bit, Chief. Uh, uh, Chief? Chief? Shall I twiddle that thing for you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lower a boat and go and get the chief back. <laughs> no, we can't. It's much too dangerous now. He'll just have to stay there until the morning. You know, I don't think he's going to like that. <laughs> well, at least he won't be lonely. You also left the fat gentleman behind. <laughs> I left the gentleman with the fat behind. Uh, uh, <laughs> Je- poor old Johnson. I, I thought the boat bounced a bit on the way back. <laughs> Here, I've just thought of something else. Both keepers are on board this frigate now. If the light happens to go out, your two won't know what to do. If I know the chief, he'll think of something. (laughs) Doomed, that's what we are, doomed. Look, will you stop moaning, chubby chops? (laughs) You shan't, it's all Mr. Phillips' fault. He's rotten. <laughs> that'll do, Johnson. That'll do. Them. They'll be back to pick us up in the morning. No, they won't. We shall never see him again. We do. What? Well, I don't know about both of us, but you are if you don't stop wallowing in it. <laughs> what about me, then? What about me? Hey? What about me, then? What about you, then? Well, Claire's bound to turn up at the island while we're here, and if anyone else spots him, that'll be chief for the officer Pertwee's lot. Yeah. We might as well look on the bright side, mind we? <laughs> Shut up. Oh, go and take a look through that window. Go on. Well, can you see anything? Of course not. It's too dark. What, all the time? Of course. Why? Oh, nothing. And where's the beam from the light gone? <laughs> hey, perhaps the people living in the flat above have pulled the curtains by the <laughs> <laughs> Look, Johnson... Present. Look, 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 dear old Johnson, I can assure you there is nobody else living in this lighthouse but us. Isn't there? No. 
Oh, but I wouldn't like you to take my word for it. So get your great fat blobby feet flying up those stairs. <laughs> See what happens to the light. Well, climb all the way up there. That's what I said to me quick about it. Go on, move. Oh. Move. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, hurry up. Just a Fatso, Fatso, say something. Say something, Fatso. Oh, didn't half go, didn't I? <laughs> Stone me. I should have known you were too well upholstered to get out. <laughs> what do you want to go and do that for? Well, you told me to be quick about it. Oh, all right, all right. Now, what about the light? Well, that's why I tripped on the stairs. It's out. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice! Nice, isn't it? Look, neither of us knows how to switch it on again and there's a flaming storm outside. Well, at least we're not on the main shipping route. I wonder what part is here, anyway. Oh, nothing much. Just a few cargo boats full of whiskey and furs and bullion and... Help! Help! <laughs> you will keep us here for weeks. I know you will. Weeks and weeks and weeks and... You'll never let them take us off here now. You know, Patson, our little stay here is doing your figure of power a good. <laughs> Do you know something? You've lost pounds. I'm not surprised. A week and nothing to eat but ship's biscuits. <laughs> it's cruelty to dumb Johnsons, that's what it is. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Look at me. I haven't lost weight. Look. I know. You're not the one who has to keep nipping up the stairs to get the biscuits. <laughs> oh, well. Shouldn't be much longer now. Well, why won't you let Number One and Mr. Phillips rescue us? Every day they turn up here in Treatbridge, and every day they go back to the island. Because you fly a signal telling them to keep off. <laughs> I know. But so far, nothing full of whiskey, furs and bullion has gone bump in the night. <laughs> Wrecker, that's what you are. You're a wrecker. That's right, and I'm liable to start on you in a minute. <laughs> Ooh, blimey. That's Trout Bridge. They're back again. Here, let me out. I want to chat to them. Here we are. Help. We almost starving. <laughs> here, Johnson, come back here and shut that door. Help. Get the boat's chair. I want to sit down. <laughs> come here. You're rotten. Absolutely stinking rotten. <laughs> Stop the light out, I want to get off. <laughs> now, this is absolutely ridiculous. They're still flying the signal to keep off, and the sea's barely choppy. Well, perhaps they can't get the signal down again, sir. I've had enough of this. We're going in, Mr. Phillips. But the rocks, sir, I mean, if they say we ought to keep off, there must be some reason. And I intend to find out what it is. Take her in a bit closer, Mr. Phillips. Yeah, aye, 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 sir. Um, terribly, terribly slow ahead, Goldstein. Terribly, terribly slow ahead it is, sir. Steady. Steady. Now the chief's waving at us from the steps. Stop engine, sir. Take her in, Mr. Phillips. Uh, aye, aye, sir. Um, left hand down, a teeny bit. Le <laughs> left hand down, a teeny bit it is, sir. And may I take this opportunity of saying how much more pleasant it is to be on the bridge for a change, sir? Oh, really? Mr. Phillips, look where you're going. <laughs> the winds can be raw on lookout, Mr. sir. Mr. Phillips, look out. Well, that's what he said. He's lookout, sir. Go, go on, Ghosty. Mr. Phillips, the rocks, what? look out. What's up, what? Ahead, sir. The lighthouse is right. Everybody down. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Phillips? Sir, shake hands. <laughs> why, why, why didn't you move over? <laughs> Look, this may come as a surprise, sir, but this lighthouse isn't afloat, sir. 
It's stuck on the rocks. Snap. So are we. <laughs> now we shall have to wait until somebody realizes we're overdue and comes to look for us. Well, they'll have to be pretty quick about it, sir. It'll be dark soon. Yeah, that's a point. At least now we're here, Mr. Proudfoot can get the light working again. Ah, well, if you insist, sir, yes. Incidentally, Mr. Phillips, where is Mr. Proudfoot? Hmm? Well, I have no idea, sir. Last I saw of him was when he waved to me from our jetty when we sailed. So he's probably still, uh... <laughs> I should have gone back for him, shouldn't I? <laughs> Why hasn't anyone turned up to look for us? We've been here for hours. Ship's biscuit, anyone? Hmm? Oh, yes, please. Yes, I'm getting a bit peckish. Hey, skinny ribs. <laughs> uh, nip up and get a biscuit for the gent. Oh, not again. Once more up them flaming stairs and I'll vanish. <laughs> not until you've brought Mr. Phillips' his biscuit, you won't. Now, off you go. Yeah, you rotten is what you are. Rotten. 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 What was that? Very odd sense. Sounded like a knock at the door. Perhaps it's the evening papers. <laughs> You know, he's bonkers. Go and see what it was, Chief. Hi, I said. Help! Help, mon ami! I cannot go another meter. No, ami! Pierre! Oh, Chiefy! Chiefy, I look for you everywhere. What's going on? Who is that, Chief? Uh, Claude Willie, sir. No, I mean, um, <laughs> uh, uh, Willie, Willie, I'm a uh, complete stranger, sir. I, I've never seen this friend of mine before in my past. <laughs> Sacre rouge, blanc et bleu. That does it. Now I spill the baked bean. No, no. <laughs> don't, 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 don't spill the beans. Look, oh, here it is. Here's your money, Pierre, my old friend. My chum, my mate, here you are. Fifty quid, take it, here you are. <laughs> That is better. All the watches and clocks are in the crates outside the door. Hey? But what's, what's the good of them here? I can't do nothing with them here. My contract was to deliver the goods to you, jean -Z. I've done it. <laughs> Wait till the Teddy Garçons hear about this, huh? Hey, wait a minute, Pierre! What's that? Pierre! Get out of it, you French polisher! <laughs> Chief! Just let me get my hands on him. Let me get my hands on him! Let me get... Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, if I had a suspicious mind, I might suspect you'd been attempting a little smuggling. You would, you... you oh, you would! <laughs> oh, would you, sir? Well, I can explain all these watches and clocks. Well, but there's no need. So happens that Claude Willy Rock is just outside the three-mile limit, so you're in the clear. Yeah. Oh, I am, sir? Yes. So far. <laughs> Of course, if you were to attempt to take any of these um, watches and clocks any nearer to England, I should have to report it. Yeah, I suppose you... Yeah, wait a minute. He said I'll pay 50 nicker for them. I can't leave them here. He said I've got to, get, I've got to flog them. I've got to work them. I've... Life's hard, isn't it? I'm ruined. That's what I have. I'm ruined. Ruined, ruined, ruined. <laughs> 50 quid's worth of smuggling and I can't smuggle it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Life can be good at times, Chief. Mr. Murray, sir. Mr. Murray. Here, Mr. Murray. Yes, Johnson? It's make peace and command a booby, sir. Heading this way. What? It's Torpy. You, you catch me up to me ears in smuggle. Not unless, not unless you move it. You know what they say, Chief? You can't take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Phillips, sir. Mr. Mr. Phillips, sir. Now, how about a lovely watch, sir? Oh, a lovely, a lovely movement, sir. A lovely movement. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, lovely, sir. Oh, a lovely watch. Have a lovely watch, sir. That's no good to me, Chief. I can't tell the time. <laughs> Johnson! Johnson, here, how about a grandfather for your grandmother? Here, get your watches here. Make club stock. Who wants a ticker for a nicker? Who wants a ticker for a nicker? Get your watches here. <laughs> Now, 
And that was Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant. Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott. Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker. Mr. Proudfoot was Michael Bates. Goldstein was Tony Evans. And Heather was Heather Chasen. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. (laughs) 